welcome guys, it's France, another journal on Monday, it's week 54 and as I ended last week with a piece of crap paper on the side of my page I decided to attach them together with my tiny attacher so that I don't get any ink or anything on it because I wanted to keep the color as it is this is just a white uh, basil that I'm covering, covering with acrylic paint it's a pewter paint which is a metallic paint because I want to create um, a metallic paper just spreading it with a card not being very um, precise about it I want a bit of the white to come through but not too much I'm just giving it a quick blow because it takes a lot of time to dry so I'm letting it aside to dry this is watercolor paper in which I'm cutting some wings using Tim Holtz alterations that I called layered angel wings and in the same kind of paper I'm cutting out um, the sewing room die. I'm not using the rest of the basil to do this because I want to use watercolor ink and the basil won't like that much water so I'm taking a thicker paper. I'm adding a bit of gesso because it will act as a resist to the ink which will add a bit more interest to it all and wiping the rest off in my mini art journal which will make a nice background for another page i'm even going to sand the gesso a bit i i you can't see it on um, uh, the camera isn't picking it up but there is really just a tiny bit of gesso and i'm even sanding it to get more of the paper coming through because that's where the ink will be picked up choosing my colorex colors and before i add them i spray some water on the paper these are gorgeous colors and they really act so well when you add water to them Adding even some more splatters with one of the darkest colors that I've been using to colorize um, the doll. And some water. As you can see the gesso really was just 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 a tiny touch of gesso. Stressing the edges with the stress ink to take off the white edge. It's quite thick paper so if you don't add the stress ink you will really see the white edge on it. And adding some heat to my metallic paper. It really takes a long time. Now the color racks are also very fun to use in mini misters. If you add water to it you will have a light but rich color. Now I have all my Colorex colors in Mini Mister, so here I'm using um, two of them. And adding some more of the gray because I wanted the gray to show more than the brown. This is a glimmer mist to add a bit of bling to it. Now I'm stamping a texture stamp to make it even more interesting. And I'm stamping it with uh, archival ink because I might be spraying some more stuff on it later on and I don't want my stamp to move. Now this is also a fun product. It's also a Colorex by PBO, but it's a white one and it's a shiny white. It is a watercolor, but it's opaque. So you can move it around with water, but if you don't add water, it will stay opaque. Now, 
this one is dry so I can continue playing with it and I'm going to add my second layer which is dilution ink. Now it might be impressive how black it turns out but it won't stay that black because well, I'll be doing a lot of more things with it later on. It takes quite some time to dry because the dilution is uh, sprayed on a non-porous surface because the metallic acrylic paint is non-porous. So you really have to help it to dry. I'm adding a second layer and then some water splatters. I can tell you that by the end of this page my fingers were so black you could take my imprints without adding any ink to them. And then I'm going over it with a baby wipe, just to move the dilutions around a bit more. And a dry cloth to wipe it all off. I want to use this embossing folder, so I have to cut my paper so that it fits inside. Using the big shot, I'm embossing every piece of it. Just like Tim Holtz showed on one of his videos, I open all my embossing folders at the top so that I can. Um, put the paper through it because this doll is too big for the embossing folder. So if you put the top of it um, in the opening, well, you can emboss it. And then going over it again with a baby wipe to take even more of the dilutions away on the open spaces. This way it looks even more like a grungy metallic surface. This is Taison that I'm applying only on the embossed surfaces of my doll. Just to make them pop out, pop out a bit more. And I'm doing the same on the metallic paper. You have to heat set it because of the metallic acrylic paint. It won't dry by itself or it will take a lot of time. So if you heat set it, it won't move after that anymore. Making my puzzle looking where I want to have which piece and thinking very long about what kind of glue I'm going to use to put that down and finally deciding to use decoupage glue. It's a very fine setting glue, it's very fun to work with because it's very easy to put on the paper and it will glue just about anything on just about anything. I'm adding some washi tape on the middle because I don't want the yellow paper of the sketchbook to shine through. Adding some oil pastels on the... how do you call it? On the... The seams. Because again, the yellow of the sketchbook is um, coming through and I don't want that to be seen, so I'm adding oil pastel, black oil pastel. Trying to go even further with charcoal pencil so that the seams really become invisible. And then taking the excess off. I don't want to work with a fixative because I've been playing around with the dilutions. If I add fixative, I will make my dilutions move and I don't want that. Adding even more washi tape to make a little standing place for my doll. 
and then fixing the washi tape with the decoupage glue so that it doesn't move because washi tape isn't made um, to, to stick very well. So you have to help it a bit. And then assembling my wings. First adding some distress ink on the edges. Again, it's quite thick paper, so if you don't do this, you will see the right edge. Um, it will remain visible. And then I can start putting everything together. Just with some tacky glue. This is a collage sheet from the Somerset Studio magazine. They really have some fun images you can use, um, like this one. Now you know I like to use my encyclopedia pages to protect the rest of my art journal and this is one of those pages that I've been using uh, to wipe off excess ink and it makes a fun background. to make a window so I'm marking where I have to cut the paper away. inside the window but as I'm adding um, a layer I decided to take out another peach <laughs> another page sorry of my <laughs> of my uh, journal like I said last week this is already uh, this is only page six of my um, new journal and it's already getting quite thick so this is the paper I used under the doll when I was colorizing it and I decided to take it back out of the trash can and use it Gluing it down again with the decoupage glue and it will make just the perfect background to work with the rest. I often get requests about what kind of moleskin I am using um, and every time I say the same thing well first of all I give the references of the journal I'm using which you can find on my blog but also it's a search to find a journal that works for you and as much as I like working in my first moleskin art journal um, this one is frustrating me because I don't know why I want to have more volume so I don't know if I will go to the end of this moleskin or if I will take some of the pages out and of course take out the pages that I've already made and insert them in another journal, a handmade one, so that I can play more with um, volume and texture. It's I think it's an eternal, eternal search after that perfect art journal that makes you happy. 
and I also think it's something that evolves. This is just some distress ink, again taking the white off the edge of the paper, well the yellow in this case, and then adding all my layers together. To glue down uh, the two pages together, I'm using double-sided tape because the paper is quite heavy and as it's a page that will be manipulated, I have to make sure it will stay in place and it will stay together. And as I don't have the patience to hold down the paper for 20 minutes until it's definitely glued together, <laughs> I go for double-sided tape. These are Graphic 45 stickers and I'm just gluing them down. I want to make it look more like an old postcard so I'm adding this Tim Holt stamp with archival ink, it's coffee archival ink, because black would be too harsh um, with the rest of the card. Another Graphic 45 sticker. This is just um, a leftover it's a technique I've learned from Rogan Marie Smith, which I love very, very much. I really like what she does. Um, using the muslin as an embellishment by stitching it. Really love how it looks. And well, this was just laying around on my table. It was a leftover from some ATCs I've been making. Now I can put my doll in place. as it won't stick while well, I'm helping it a bit. Another thing I had laying around on my... Oh no, something else first. Uh, this is one of my new stamps by Stamp Boutique. It's a text stamp. Stamping it with archival ink on Craft Basil. And the stamp says you're strong enough, you just don't know it yet. And it's a saying by G.F. Charles, which happens to be my husband, because that's a saying he always is saying to me. I'm adding some glimmer mist, just to make it work with the rest of the page, and then distressing it. This is Candy Rock Crackle Paint by Ranger, which I'm using on the wings to give them even more texture. It will unfaze the stamp I've been using on them. So that's why I had to stamp with archival ink. If I had done that with distress ink and I would be using the crackle paint over it, my stamp would be moving all around. And on the doll I'm using Bindex because I want to have a shine, but I don't want to have the same crackles as I will have on the wings. Now I'm working quite quickly and I'm not pushing my brush down too hard because it would uh, make the um, Colorex ink react and I don't want my Colorex ink to move. If I wouldn't have been working in this moleskin but in a journal that allowed me some texture, some more volume, I would have been gluing this down with 3D foam, but in this case 
it would have been too much. This is a lace cut out from one of my French encyclope encyclopedia pages. <laughs> I need more coffee, I think. Um, and I'm just adding some glimmer mist to it to make the color work with the rest of the papers that I've already been using on my page. I've only had one cappuccino so far and, well, that's clearly not enough. Going around with a charcoal pencil to blend everything together and to make um, the inserts pop even more. Now my watercolor paper is quite thick and the paper underneath is quite textured, so my glue couldn't make it work. Um, to keep the doll in place. So I could take it back off and add some drippage. This is gold acrylic paint by PBO that I have uh, put in a, in a little bottle together with water. And adding even more water on top of it will make it drip all over the paper. same on the other side but I'm as you can see I'm quite careful with my water spray because I don't want everything to get wet and as I have still some gold paint on the top of the bottle well I'm spreading it around with my finger it's been picked up quite nicely by the texture. So, going in with double-sided tape because with the glue it wasn't working. some art some journaling sorry with a um, posca pen which is a paint pen it can write on just about anything so even on the bindex I want my postcard to pop out a bit more so I'm adding an edge with a uniball pen While I'm at it, well, I can add some edges on everything. And then going back in with my white pen. As you know, I like to have my journaling in black and in white on top of each other. Again, it's a Posca paint pen. Adding some white splatters, again with the white color X. And an edge all around the pages with the white Posca paint pen. Only thing left for me to add after this is my date stamp, which will make my image look even more like a vintage postcard. I hope you liked today's video. I'm off to have some more cappuccino. See you on my blog.
Bye. Be happy.